Hello there, everybody. How's it going? It's Jessie from Jessie Marie Does Stuff here on FlashTube, and I am coming to you with my next update video here on Wednesday, March 13th, 2019. So happy Dark 13 stitching to everybody who is participating. Um, it's a pretty good day for some Dark 13 stitching. I mean, on Wednesdays we stitch black, and I don't know, just kind of all comes together nicely. Anyway, uh, so let's get on to the video. Full disclosure, I'm not in my best mood. Um, I'm going through some stuff on the personal side and I'm not going to really discuss it here. Um, if we are friends on Facebook, then you may know what's going on, um, but otherwise I'm just kind of kind this, kind of keep this close, closer to home. Uh, but what that means is that I'm like not as peppy as I normally am. Um, I'm on this roller coaster and I'm in kind of a downturn of the roller coaster right now. So uh, forgive me if I'm looking and seeming a little off. I just, just not at my best. But I wanted to film today. I have a few things to talk about and... I'm trying to stay consistent. Um, as a lot of you who, who deal with with mental with mental health things, sometimes just keeping to a routine is enough. And so that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to stick to a routine to keep moving forward. Um, and eventually I will be in an upswing. Eventually. Hopefully sooner rather than later. Anyway, so uh that is, that's kind of what's going on there. If you guys notice, I'm seeming a little down. I am. Uh, and I will freely admit it. However, <laughs> I have all of the things to talk about today. Um, I have whips and books and knitting. Yeah, like all of the things. So uh, let's just go ahead and jump right in. And we are going to start with some sort of administrative things. So you probably have noticed a bit of a different look. Uh, I have a new thumbnail and my sort of transition slide things are looking a little different. And then once you get to the end of the video, the end of that is going to look a little different too. Basically what happened is um, in my previous videos, I put up um, my Instagram username and my Ravelry username if you want to find me on those on those medias. Um, and for the first time in a while, I watched my last update video from start to finish. And those particular slides made me dizzy. Uh, with the background that I was using and then the fonts that moved and it was it was not good. And as somebody who is prone to dizzy spells and migraines, I know I'm not alone in that, and so I'm not trying to cause anybody any pain. Uh, so I decided to switch it up, and then I just kind of decided to evolve it a little bit so it's all a little bit more cohesive. It all works from start to finish. So there's that. Um, it may change again in the not-so-distant future. We'll see how this goes. Um, Hoping, fingers crossed, that this works on the first try, because I did something a little um, unorthodox to try to make it happen. So we'll see. We'll see. You will be the first to know. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, up next in administrative things. Oh, um, I don't really have any, like, Q&A to sort of make a segment out of Q&A. Um, but last week, Haley commented on my video looking for my full coverage demos, my Heaven and Earth Designs full coverage demos, um, and she was having a hard time finding them. So I replied to her comment to provide her with those links, but I've also put them in the description box of this video uh, because I'm sure that Haley is probably not the only one. I think that what I'm going to do is probably create a playlist because I've got those two videos then I have the one that I just put up on Monday with how to do the full coverage grid things using Mac numbers. And I also, I have another follow-up 
to the actual demo itself to address some questions that popped up. So probably need to make just like a specific playlist for those things. So I'll put that on my to-do list. We'll see if I remember it. <laughs> um, speaking of the, of the video that I put up on Monday, um, thank y'all for checking that out. And I am happy, super happy to hear that it's working for some people. Uh, Emily Dyes Fiber, she said that she gave it a try on Inkscape and it worked out beautifully as far as that's concerned, so that's really great to hear. I think I have Inkscape, or I did before I wiped my laptop. Maybe I have GIMP, one of the two, um, but I know that it's it's probably feasible in, in all photo editing. Uh, so that sort that video sort of gives you a basis for how to, how to create those, so. Anyway, I'm super glad that, that those who have uh, have wanted a, a demo of that, super glad to hear that it's working. So, good to go there. And I think that's it for administrative stuff. So, let's move on. I don't have any FFOs this week. As it turns out, I still only have room for two things in my life. And it's either knitting, reading, or FFOing. <laughs> And this week I have knitting and reading, so uh, hopefully some FFOing will be happening next week. Okay, let's go ahead and get into the works in progress. We are back to the original format. As in, last week, when we last spoke, I was working on In This Moment by Heaven and Earth Designs, artwork by Jeremiah Kettner, a.k.a. Mika McKenna. <laughs> Say that five times fast. Um, so this beauty is what I was working on last week. And I told you guys that I had just like 1,200 stitches left, I think, at that point. Um, and that I didn't think I was going to get page 16 done until Sunday. Well, some of y'all know me better than myself. You all knew that I was not going to be able to leave this project with just a few hundred stitches to go for the whole weekend. And you are absolutely right. There was no way I was going to be able to do that. So I finished the page on Friday or on Thursday before we left. Uh because I just, I couldn't leave it to, to the weekend. I couldn't like, in my head, I knew I was gonna be constantly thinking about this. So I, I just, I kept on it and I stitched quite a bit Thursday night, uh, Wednesday night, excuse me, and then Thursday morning, I didn't run any of my errands until it was done. Oh, thread's hanging. So, just pan up here. And there we have it. So here's the whole thing. Y'all haven't seen the whole thing, at least not on video in, in a little while. So I'm gonna leave this up for, for a little bit so that y'all can see her. And then I'll show you the back. But first, let me bring it in close so that you can see a finished page 16. Isn't that pretty? Yep, I, I love it. I absolutely love it. Isn't this crazy? These little stitches are little squares, and yet it, enough squares put together and you get the curve. I love that. So, I did finish this up uh, Thursday around noonish, I want to say. And then Sunday, when we got back, I got the barest of little starts on page 22 here. Uh, I got it gritted, and I was exhausted after travel. Um, and just a long weekend, and I was dealing with an allergic reaction, uh, which happens when we go to Blacksburg sometimes. Um, so I just, I wasn't in the best of stitching grooves. Plus, I burned out. <laughs> I had a, a 1,300 stitch day, and then a 1,600 stitch day, and then an 1,100. Like, it was a lot in a very short period of time. Um, so I was a little bit burnt out. So I did 40 stitches. The top two blocks there is uh, 20 stitches. 
um, because of the margins, and then just a little bit in the next block, and then that was it. That was it. So page 16 here, my third page finish for the year. Three months, three pages. Uh, it took me nine total stitching days, which I think is my record for a for an actual full page. I mean, I did like Snow Castle. I did page three in two days, but it's less than half a page. So, um, actual full page, unwieldy a little bit. Um, nine stitching days. This is my fourth finish for the year of whips. It is my third of seven pages for the year as far as my goal for this project is concerned. Still over 200,000 stitches to go, but hey, get just progress. Progress is the key here. So there's that. Now I really wanted to get a good dent in page 22 before the start of April. Uh, because I need that momentum to carry me through the start of a page. I've talked about it several times about how hard it is for me at the start of a page. Just that blank slate. Um, it's just a little difficult. Uh, but this is going to come out at the end of the month, probably for Stephanie's birthday sale, uh, Miss Oso Crafty's birthday sale. So I will, I'll get back to this before April and then continue on my way. And hopefully I can stop myself from getting so obsessed um, to prevent burning out, because that would be bad. That would be bad before halfway through the year burning out. So there's that. Um, and then I will show you guys the back. Not too bad. You can see what's going on there. Not bad. I do carry a little bit um, in some places, but not a ton. So there's that. Uh, this is a 25 count cream Lugana by Zweigart. I do have an Unearth Designs one over one full cross. Um, if I zoom in on the darker shades, you can see the coverage is fabulous. And after this gets a wash in 10 years when it's done, those threads will fluff up. So there we have it, and I will get back to this. Like I said, I think at the begin at the end of the month, and certainly early on in April. But my twenty four hundred, my by the numbers twenty four hundred is long over, and my by the numbers twelve hundred is done. So I have effectively met my month end goal with that project, which is is good. We go down to Blacksburg Thursday, and um, I just mainly focused on a Mill Hill kit. And that Mill Hill kit is my only, and this is uh, Jim Shore by Mill Hill Owl. This was a beautiful gift. The kit was from Brittany, find the cat, Ingleside Imaginarium. Gotta get all of <laughs> Brittany's names out. And, uh, so I worked on this because it's in hand, it's really easy for travel stitching, um, and I did quite a bit. So before, I just had the red and the white part of his hat done, and now I've worked down uh, face. He doesn't have a beak or eyes yet, but he will. Some of the scarf, there's still quite a bit of scarf left to do. Uh, chest, which is pink. Yep. And that's on purpose. I mean, that's what the chart says. <laughs> There's that pink design. Uh, wing and, and such here. So I did quite a bit. Now I did have this picked for the ultimate stitching challenge in School of Magical Stitches. Uh, I had this for Harry and Ron both received seven owls. Um, ordinary wizarding levels, shorthand owls. And uh, so I stitched on an owl. Fitting. So there's that. Uh, and so I put in over a thousand stitches. I think I did a total of a thousand five. 
uh, to satisfy that challenge. I stitched more this Blacksburg weekend than I have in all Blacksburg weekends combined since I started stitching. Um, there was a lot of downtime this weekend. On Friday, the game wasn't until uh, after dinner. It was a 7 o'clock tip-off. Uh, and um, so we were hanging out throughout the day. Uh, and then Saturday, uh, my in-laws and my brother-in-law went to a, an all-day wrestling uh, event. Um, and Danny and I did not. <laughs> uh, we hung out. Uh, we watched TV, what we could, because uh, the cable's not hooked up at the house. We played board games. Uh, and we went out to lunch, and I stitched. So, um, yeah, it was really, really chillax the, the whole, the whole weekend and it was great. Um, so that's why I was able to get this much done while we were gone in Blacksburg. And then I did do a little bit here on Sunday, um, after I put down in this moment. So there is that. Somebody asked me, well, why don't you just go ahead and just finish it? Cause this is my last Mill Hill kit and no starts 2019. <laughs> um, so yeah, I had to I had to put it down. And I did. But it was it was wonderful that I did because Monday was the start of my uh my next rotation, my first whip go rotation and I was absolutely ecstatic to get up Monday morning. So, uh, that rotation is with Forever and Ever. This is by Cottage Garden Samplings from the Songbirds Garden series number one. And this features the Northern Cardinal and the Christmas Rose. And I am in love with this. I'm in love with this project. So, um, I have not made the progress this week that I would have liked. My original goal at the start, first thing Monday morning, was um, top half. But that's not going to happen. So let me show you where I'm at. My fabric here is showing up way more accurate on camera than it does in any photograph. Uh, it is 32 Count Belfast in Vintage Winter Sky by Lakeside Linens. And I am obsessed with this fabric. So. Here is where we are. I finally got that first flower done. I'm just gonna hold this here because I can see through it. Can we just talk about Lakeside Linens for a second? They are so expensive, but they are beautiful and so lovely to work on. This has been just a dream, stitching on it. Um, I have, you know, dealt with some stuff personally and so stitching, it hasn't been what it maybe could be. Um, but it's been a dream when I've been able to stitch. So I finished the flower and then I got started on the leaves. Um, and I had to grid up. So there's that. And you will see my needle minders there. Um, Abby Cat that uh, Abby was Sharing with everybody, top knot stitcher at um, StitchCon this year. Love that. And then Flapper Girl, because my grandma, who was the inspiration for this project, uh, was born in the 20s. So, there is that. And I will continue working on this uh, through the end of this week. All right, so this is going to take us into plans. And my immediate plans, uh, first of all, with Forever and Ever, I'm gonna try to do this, nope. I'm gonna try to do this corner, this quarter of the design. So it basically comes down through half the house, but I'm just gonna finish the house and all of the leafy bits um, there above. 
And that's what my goal is going to be for the end of the week, which I think is achievable. I think the leaves are going to stitch up pretty quickly, if I'm honest. Um, it's just a few colors, and it's basically just straight down. So that is my goal for this project for the end of the week. Okay, some of y'all are probably looking at me. Uh, you haven't done the homework yet? <laughs> I know, right? Uh, so the theme for the last few weeks is that I've done the homework, like, first thing Monday. At the beginning of the year, when I first sort of jumped in all in with School of Magical Stitches, I talked about the fact that I was going to stick to my rotation, and then if I met my goal by the end of the week on whatever I was working on, then I would switch over and do the homework. Um, and if it looked like I wasn't going to be able to reach my goal, then I would do forfeit stitches or whatever. I'd find a way to make it work. I'm trying to get back to that. I got up Monday morning. I was hoping it could make forever and ever fit the homework. Probably could in some aspects. Um, but, or I could have done forfeit stitches, but I'm still trying to stick to, I'm trying to be a purist a little bit and stick to the tasks as and when I can. Um, and so... I ultimately decided to work on forever and ever through the end of the week, and then I will do homework after the fact. The goal that I have now set, that quarter of the pattern, I think I can have done by Friday afternoon. And then Friday afternoon and bleeding into Saturday morning if necessary, then I can do the homework. Okay, so what is the homework this week? Real quickly here, the basis is Dementors and the fact that after... Um, you're in close proximity with Dementors or you're attacked by a Dementor, um, chocolate helps. Thanks JK for that. Another excuse to have chocolate. Um, so for that uh, particular part of the homework, we have to put in 300 stitches of brown. Um, and it has to be brown stitches. Okay, the other part of the task is with relation to a course that third years take, and that's Care of Magical Creatures. And the first creature that was studied was a hippogriff. And so our task with that is to put in 300 stitches on a project that has um, an animal with claws or talons. And the reason for that is that a hippogriff is part eagle, part horse. So those are our tasks. Okay. So could I have made Halloween at Hawkrun Hollow fit? Absolutely. There's a ton of brown in that design. Um, there's that I could reasonably get to. The horse in block three is in brown. No problem. And then are there animals with claws or talons? Tons of them. Owls and bats um, and... Uh, even alligators, crocodiles, whatever's in that one block down there um, towards the bottom of Halloween and Hawkrun Hollow, even that could be, it could fit. It's not enough for me. Remember, I told you guys I'm a purist. Um, and I wanted to make one project fit. So I went with the Prior Schooler Alphabet. And the Prior Schooler, as many of you know, is notorious for 3371. And I'm doing this according to the chart because I'm a purist. <laughs> um, and Needleminder there from uh, Kate at No Name Needleminders. Um, so, yeah, I have a ton of brown to do for this. I still have a couple of birds left in the Bees for Blackbird block. I also have um, the brown here for the cow, for C's for cow. So plenty of brown to stitch. And I can make this project fit for the other task, something with talons. Now, um, for this task, you don't have to stitch on the animal. It just has to be in the project. Um, with the brown, you have to stitch, you have to stitch brown. But this one, it just has to be in the project. And at the bottom of D is for drum is an eagle. I just got done telling y'all that a hippogriff is half eagle. So it definitely fits the talons bit. Could I have said that the birds in Forever and Ever, the cardinals, that they have claws or talons? Yep, I could have. Uh, but I wanted to go with something a little bit more obvious. 
Uh, and um, it, so a bird of prey is uh, probably going to be the better option for that. So that's just why I went with this. Plus, um, B and C are both a part of my year of lips. D, is, D for drum is a part of my year-end goal for this project. So it just works that I work on this somewhere. Okay, <laughs> enough of that. On 40 count uh, Newcastle Linen in Platinum by Zweigart. So this is where I'm starting from. And uh, so I still have a bird to do over here. I have to finish this one and then stitch that one. So I will probably have to come up here and work on the cow, which is fine. I don't mind bouncing around a little bit. But putting 300 stitches, or putting a total of 600 stitches into this project, yeah, I'm, I'm down for that. So I probably will need Friday afternoon and Saturday morning, but it, I'm good with that. Uh, I will get the homework done, no problem there. Then on Saturday, that starts my next whip go rotation. And this is um, Beauty and the Beast by Donna Stitch. Or I think it's called Belle now. Uh, and I'm so excited to work on this. I'm hoping for a page finish because credit <laughs> for a stitch from Stash. I may, I may be doing this in partials. Um, but we'll see what happens. Uh, this is on a 32 count Belfast in cream by Zweigart. And uh, so that is what I've got going on with that. This is where I'm starting from. Using all of the called for DMCs, really the ultimate goal for that five day rotation is to get the flower done. If I could just get the flower done for the first, like after three years of working on this, I think that'd be wonderful. <laughs> So that's where I'm starting from for that. Um, I have to get to this on Saturday because my year-end goal for the piece is actually just five days effort. And I um, would like to get that done so that I can check off something on my WIPCO board. I think that'd be great. So that's what I'll be working on when we, uh, when we meet up next week. So that is it for the plans. Um, I have some, some changes to my overall plans, but I'll talk about those another time. Um, I need to sort of finish off my thought on that before I share it. So let's switch over to the stash acquisitions. Stash this week is real quick. It's just my threads of the month from Coloring Cotton. I am in a floss of the month directly through Angela. And I get five skeins of her sort of limited editions, like the original thread pack. And I'm not gonna go through each of these because I know several other people have or will, um, but these are beautiful. Um, this one here, Caramel Brownie, looking forward to finding something to do with that. That would be wonderful. So that's the classic pack or uh, limited editions, I'm not entirely sure what that set is called. And then I also get her Primitives pack, and this is just a beautiful set. Mm, do I have anything to hold up behind this? Yeah, that's closer. So I'm gonna go through these individually. Uh, the darkest one here is Lava Stone, beautiful purples. Uh, then this is Plum Wine. Silt, S-I-L-T. Sort of like a kind of movie, pinky brown. Uh, then we have Granite, love and mist, which is really something, something special. It's not showing up too well. It's, there we go. It's bluey. It's like a bluey gray. I love that. Very, very pretty. 
So that's it for the stash acquisition. My market haul will be here, I think, today, if not tomorrow, but I wasn't waiting for it before I filmed. Uh, so I will just, I'll show that to you next week. It's not much, um, but I had to get at least a something for from market. From market. Okay, let's switch over to, let's do books next. In books, I have just two things to talk to you about. Uh, the first of which is real quick, I am still reading The Priory of the Orange Tree. Uh, nope, haven't finished that monstrosity yet. <laughs> um, but I'm so excited. I've enabled several of you to check it out, and I hope that, I hope that, that this is a good recommendation. Um, I feel bad about recommending something before I've read it. <laughs> but um, nonetheless. Anyway, yeah, still reading that. Um, and in fact, I have decided that I'm not going to try to finish the book this month. I'm reading it too slowly um, at this point. And I'm in the early stages, so I'm in like world development and getting accustomed to the characters and their personalities and where the heck anything is going. Um, and so it's no surprise that it's going a little slower, but there's no way I'm going to finish the whole thing in March. So it can stretch out into April. It's fine. It has to be done by the end of April, so I'm good with that. Um, I'll try to read half of it here in March. That's still over 400 pages. It's still a book in and of itself. Um, it's just not the whole thing. So there is that. Now, the other book I finished. I finished it this morning. And that is The Furies of Calderon by Jim Butcher. I think last week I had... At this point last week, I think I had 50 additional pages read, so I still had an over 200 pages to go. And yeah, I just ate the end of this. Um, it ended up being really good. Um, but it took a long time to get there. Um, about 300 pages. This whole book is 600 pages. Uh, and it is the first in a five or six or seven book series. I'm not entirely sure how long the series is. Um, so the first 300 pages in the grand scheme of the whole series wasn't very long, but it took me like three months to read it. <laughs> so yeah, it, um, it was slow in the beginning, but then it picked up and it got so good. Um, there's um, a scene with Tavi that he has to basically run a Herculean task, um, and he's just a kid. Um, and then there's this battle that felt so much like the battle for, at Helm's Deep in Lord of the Rings. Ugh, it was so good. Towards the end of the book, the lines between who's good versus who's the bad guys got very blurred. Um, you start to really like a character that you hated at the start. There was a character that you didn't like at the start that you grow to hate. Um, and that character met an end that was so satisfying. <laughs> um, I love it when that happens, when you, when you just learn to loathe the character and the author does it right. Um, it was really fascinating. Uh, but like I said, it took a really long time to get into, so I rated it four stars, and that was probably pretty generous. I probably would have given it three and a half, because I think the back half was probably four and a half stars, and the front half was probably like a two. Um, so, anyway, um, yeah, I enjoyed this, and I think I will continue with the series. This is great. It didn't end on a ridiculous cliffhanger, ooh, that's like forcing you to go buy the next book immediately. It ends in a way that like sets up for another book, but not, it's like not necessary. Like this is a kind of a complete story in and of itself. Um, another thing I didn't love about it was Jim Butcher's too nice to his characters. Um, and I'll just leave it at that. It's just too nice to them. Um, this could have taken a, a darker turn. And there are some really dark aspects of this, um, but it could have gone darker. 
if Jim Butcher had handled it that way. So we'll see what the rest of the series does. I am going to get the next book. The next book in the series is called um, Academ's Fury. And I'm not even going to tell you what that's about because spoilers. Uh, but so I'm, I'm excited about that. And I will get to that eventually. I have kind of a list of big books that I would like to read this year. And Academ's Fury will have to wait until I get through some of those. Uh, like I said, it doesn't end on a huge cliffhanger, so I'm not chomping at the bit to get back to the story and figure out what happens next. It has a pretty satisfying ending, so there's that. Let's switch over to knitting. We haven't had a knitting segment in quite some time, huh? Yeah, that's because I haven't been knitting. <laughs> um, I talked about the fact that that one cowl I thought was the reason that I wasn't knitting so I switched to my socks and I started knitting pretty furiously again and then I haven't picked them up in so long and the draw to that is just not there it's just not there so I have decided to go back to more of a goal-based rotation as far as knitting is concerned and what I think I'm going to do is every Thursday morning I am going to random number generate a new knitting whip to work on. I have 10 knitting whips currently on the go. That's a lot. Um, and so I'm going to set a goal for the week and um, oh, try to reach that goal. Once I reach the goal, then I'll random generate a different, a new project to work on. And I did this yesterday. Uh, I felt like knitting yesterday and... Um, I'm really thankful that this project came up because it's it's not mindless, but it's simple. Um, it's a big shawl, which is my favorite thing to knit. Um, and it's at a stage now where I have a ton of stitches on the needles and it's simple enough where it's just knits and pearls. Um, it's, been, it's been really great to work on this when I haven't been in necessarily the best headspace. So uh, let me talk about what the project is, um, but in a roundabout kind of way. So a few years ago, I think five, um, Hohi Locatelli released a design called the Three Color Cashmere Cowl. And I had been getting the Plucky Knitter Primo Fingering Classic subscription for a while when she released this pattern and I thought this is perfect. Let me pull out some cashmere and uh, knit this cowl. And so I did. So I knit this in 2014 and this is my three color cashmere cowl. So like I said, Plucky Knitter Primo Fingering um, which is a I have a label here. It's 75% superwash merino, 20% cashmere, 5% nylon, 385 yards per skein. I don't remember all of the details of this. I might have had to shorten a section or two because I didn't have quite enough yardage, um, but I don't know that for certain. And so the colors that I used were Manderley. Um, all of the classic subscriptions, I don't know if they're still doing this because I haven't been a part of it for a long time now. Uh, but it has a basis in um, an inspiration in a classic of some sort. And so Manderley, Rebecca. Uh, then this sort of grayish color, gray beige, is Heartstrings. That's the name of the colorway. I'm not, I don't recall what the inspiration is. And this beautiful turquoise, it's showing up more blue on camera. It's the impossible to photograph but ever so loved Move Over Darling. I was never so excited to be a part of this classic subscription than when they released this color. There is so much depth to this color, it's impossible to photograph. It's just absolutely impossible to photograph. It's showing up so much more blue and it's really like a beautiful, like jeweled green color. So I knit this and I'm gonna block it again because um, 
I didn't black it very aggressively and it's a little bit tight um, here at my bind off and cast on edges. So it needs, it needs a little bit more blocking. Okay, so I show you this because this pattern was wildly popular and so much so that Hohe released a three color cashmere shawl. So I was like, well, I've already done the cowl. Oh yeah, I'm gonna jump in for the shawl. Um, like I said, I love the pattern and I'm a shawl knitter. So I was like, I'm, I'm doing this. So I cast on. Keep in mind, four years ago, and you can see where I'm at currently. Yeah, I'm in the stripes. So, I'll talk about the yarns here in just a second. Um, so this was done previously. I mean, I'm pretty sure that I did a knitting whip parade and I showed you this beforehand, so. Um, but if you've never seen this before, so those are the big sections of stripes with the eyelets. And then I am in the stripes here. And the total section of stripes is 10 stripes in each color. And at the point when I picked this up yesterday, I didn't put in a progress keeper, um, but I had five stripes of each color. So I was halfway through this section. And now I have one stripe of each color left uh, before I move on to the next, the next section. There are over 300 stitches on the needles currently. Um, so it's quite a lot of pearls and it increases fast. Um, there are, it increases by four stitches on every right side row and two on every wrong side row. Um, so we're getting essentially six stitch increase every stripe. It increases fast. Um, this is a very long, very wide, very deep, very comforting shawl and I'm so excited about it. I just really hope I have enough yarn. Uh, so speaking of yarn, the bluey steel gray that you saw there, Thor is snoring up a storm, um, is, uh, this is Poet's Corner. It's also that Plucky Knitter Primo fingering, uh, and this is Poet's Corner. And the inspiration for this was, so I married an axe murderer. So there's that. It's definitely bluey gray. It's beautiful. The cream color is Dream and Color Smooshy with Cashmere uh, in the Crying Dove colorway. I wanted a Plucky Knitter cream, but I couldn't get a hold of one at the time. Uh, it used to be really, really, really difficult to get what you wanted as far as Plucky is concerned. Um, if I ever ordered Plucky, in their Etsy sales or from their shop, it was like, I pretty much just bought whatever I could. <laughs> it wasn't going in there with what I wanted. So I just ordered this from, I believe it was Eat Sleep Knit. And uh, let's see, Dreaming Colors Mushy with Cashmere is a beautiful, it's a beautiful base. Um, this is 70% Superwash Merino, 20% Cashmere, 10% Nylon. Here's the crazy thing. Plucky Knitter has more cash or has less nylon in it, more superwash merino than smooshy with cashmere. Cashmere, but I think that it's because Plucky is twisted so tight. You can't see that because my camera doesn't focus like it should. Um, it's twisted so much tighter that this is so much softer, <laughs> and. It's not just because this is kind of a barely dyed colorway. Uh, I have experienced this with other Smooshy with Cashmere. This is so soft. It's unbelievable. Anyway, so there's that. Now, my pop of color. I had had this picked out literally for years. I balled it up years ago. Shouldn't do this, but I did. I balled it up years ago and put it in my project bag that's showing up way more hot pink than it is. I mean, it's hot pink, it's just not, it's not neon. It's not neon. Um, so this is CC Bloom, and the inspiration is Beaches, and it's also Plucky Knitter Primo Fingering. So this was my pop of color, pretty much from project inception. 
However, this is not really my color. <laughs> this is not really a color that I gravitate towards. But this is. <laughs> uh, so this is uh, Hill Valley, and the inspiration is Back to the Future. And it's just this beautiful teal. Again, it's showing up more blue on the camera than it is. It's definitely more green. Um, I would say like a minty Tiffany. Not quite this Tiffany, um, but more, more green. Still too blue. It doesn't matter. It's not gonna. It's not gonna come across properly. So it's still kind of an homage to my three color cashmere cowl. Um, it's the same kind of idea: a dark, and then a light, and then a pop of a teal shade. Um, so then it would kind of look like this. And this really, this looks this looks good to me together, but. Gray and white and pink look well together too. So, I don't know. What do you guys think? It's only used for that textured section. I may incorporate whatever it is in the bind off because it's only supposed to be used for that textured section. And I would like um, I would like to use the color just a little bit more than that. If I can, if I've got the yardage. Primo fingering has such a short put up that um, yeah, the, the yardage is, is a part of conversation. So let me know what you guys think. CC Bloom or Hill Valley? And neither of these are showing up right, so I'm not even gonna fight it anymore. So that's what I'm working on. My goal for this rotation, I guess I'm gonna call it that. My goal for this rotation is to get the stripes done and to get my pop of color uh, worked in like one repeat of the textured section or less, just to get it worked in a little bit. And I think I can do that today. Maybe not, I haven't stitched yet today. We'll see. Uh, so I will random number generate and pick a new project for next week. And we'll just, I'll try to keep knitting, uh, but who knows, we'll see what happens. So that's it for that. And that's it for the video. Uh, once again, longer than I thought. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, that's just how it goes. Uh, so, thank y'all for watching. Thank you for sending your love. Uh, if you know what I'm dealing with um, and you have sent messages of support or advice, um, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, if you're new here, thank you so much for checking me out. I hope that you liked what you saw. Big variety of stuff this week. And um, so yeah. And if you are returning, then so much love to you. Okay, everybody, I'm going to head off here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your continued support. I hope that you're doing well. I hope that you're stitching. Y'all be kind. Just be kind. And I was